Central Club. What's going on, people? Welcome to the Central Club. This episode is brought to you by Reinspire Printing and Boss Security. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the club, and hit the bell button to be notified of future content. Today's interviewee is someone I've been a massive fan of since young. When I say young, I mean 15, 16. But, you know, being a, a you know heavily influenced by UK music, garage music, dub, and especially grime, you know, it was inevitable that I was going to bump into this person one day or another. And and the way this has happened is, is unbelievable. Uh, we've got him at the podcast right now. It's Birmingham's very own legendary Socks. Inside the place. I thank you for having us, man. Central Club, we're here. Bat bat. Oh, mate, I, this is quite surreal to be honest. Like I am, um, I'm gassed uh, to say the least. Um, my brother was a big fan of you as well, and when I told him he was, uh, he was here today. He was going to book a day off work. That's how gassed he was. Bro. <laughs> Madness. Big him up, man. Big him up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You love this. Um, what's happening, bro? Good man. Active. Happy to be down here, man. Back in Wales. You get me? Yeah. Well, you have got a. a, a, a you know, a bit of history with Wales, haven't you? Definitely, man. I mean, my first ever paid show was in Newport. So <laughs> proper things, man. Big up basement. Okay, now, 2009, man. man. So I've always had a lot of connections down Wales and love for the country on the whole, man. Yeah, no. Nah, Speaking love... of Wales, I bought you a gift, bro. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. So um, I told you I'm into my trading cards. I bought you uh, three dragons. Oh, my. Swear down, bro. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Oh, my God, bro. But yeah, so that's the, I know you collect your Pokemon, so that's the first start to you, you go to three dragons. And they're decent, yeah? Yeah, man, they're decent. Inside. Inside. Central Club. (laughs) Yo, socks, bro. That's very nice of you, bro. I will definitely start going into them. See with me, look, I got OCD bad, like, you know, and when I get into something, like I go all in. So um, you might have just started up a bad habit for me. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, quickly going back to Newport. I'm quite surprised Newport, of all, all places, paid you. <laughs> yeah, man, it was um, decent. I think he said I can have 125 quid or half the door money. And um, being 19 at the time, I went, yeah, 125 quid guaranteed. I think I would have been a lot better off if I had half the door money. So um, Was it rammed? Not RAM, but a couple hundred for, a, I think it was under 18s at the time yeah, as well, yeah, man. Yeah. Rolling capacity, a couple hundred. So, yeah, man, a business lesson number one at my first show, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, mate, honestly, it's, it's it's a pleasure to have you here. I've seen more of you as of recent. I, I don't know if it's because, like, it's only now I've kind of got off drugs and I'm, like, looking around the scene more. But, yeah, uh, the last year or so, it's like I've started to see your name more than the last 10 years, I would say. No, we've been active as well and um, we've got new music management and social media management. So popping around on TikTok, Twitter's back up and running, three different Instagram accounts promoting and um, a lot of radio work. We're active, yeah. making sure we're doing at least a grime set like what, twice a month? If that bare minimum. <laughs> yeah, shout out to MZ in the back. Yeah, Rue Gang in the building. Yeah, so um, it's good to see because, you know, it's a conversation that always comes around. Is grime dead? Is grime alive? Like, you know, and if... If we got a man like you who are performing, like you said, at least twice a week. Grime never healthy. dies, it just travels. Trust me. Like yeah. people in New Zealand and Australia will clock onto it at different times. Big fan base for Grime in Japan. It's South America's where it's at the moment. Brazil. Brazil. I just see it. Took the words out yeah, of my yeah, mouth, bro. Yeah. So um Well, Grime Originals and all that, don't they? They get involved in a lot of that, don't they? Yeah, there'll always be the UK scene and that, but I mean the fact that people would say Grime is dead. How many years ago could you go to Brazil and do grime? So it's more alive than ever, but people's, in the terms of the UK industry and what's getting played on the radio, it's drills having its moment. But internationally, grime isn't dead. I think the whole industry is worth like, what, 65 million? That doesn't sound very dead considering there's only like 50, 30 rappers. Yeah, 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 definitely. And, and how does it feel to know that, you know, when you look all, all around the world now, they all pay homage to the UK. They all look at like, you know, England, you could say Wales, but not really. Uh, you or Britain, I should say, as as the home of grime. So, how does it feel? Because I know, for someone who is a connoisseur of that music, one of the greats. How does it feel knowing that you have kind of influenced that? Well, we watched it from the start, and it. So it was. I've seen every aspect of it, from um, it not being cool to it being cool, then it not being cool. Like it goes around in circles. It's always on a loop, and it. And um, it's good to see, man. Like people actually come up off just rapping in their bedroom and 
make a whole life out of it and get to travel and see the world, even if they don't have it as a career forever. There's so many people that have had like five year good spells and it's changed their life in it. Yeah, they, they're still living off it now. Just from a, a genre of music that came from the UK streets. Yeah, yeah. And it is, it's amazing because, you know, you talk about 20, we, we spoke on the phone and I said, so when you was listening back, when you first started, was it rap to start? And you were like, no, 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 it was, it was grime. Yeah, grime out too, man. But there are a lot out there who started on rap. And, you know, the fact that we actually made a sound from the UK that is different, set, you know, it's, it's, it's miles apart from rap. I mean, when I've always been fans of Linkin Park and Eminem and 50 Cent and that. But yeah. then once the 140 BPM music came out and <sighs> disease, I think it was more seeing that man's from the block could just go studio and actually create a piece of audio that you could share and listen to. I always thought like after watching eight mile, it would cost millions and millions of pounds. No, you can record on an MP3 player from Argus with a Duracell back. Do you remember them? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Sick. once that side of the, I realized you can record in your bedroom on an MP3 yeah. player. It was a lot more easier to see how you could get further in it. Is that how you started? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally, my, I got an Argus MP3 player for Christmas. And um, I used to put it a half distance from the speaker, half distance from me, and just read off my rap lyrics into that. Share and drop on MSN and Messenger in it. MSN, bro. Crazy. But yeah, man. <laughs> and then you're just a slightly bit older than, you're just a couple of years older than us, isn't you? Like, so for your era as well, I bet it was similar as well. Like, you know, you, you, that's how we how it's evolving for us, weren't it? Like, you know? There was studios, but you just don't think about it when you're 12, innit? You no. always find a way around it. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. So, if, uh, I know now, myself, but for the people maybe who don't, what part of Birmingham are you from? Um, I'm from Newtown, Jewelry Quarter, so smack bang in the middle, man. Yeah, I always thought it was small leaf. But I'm the amount of times I've heard you say small leaf. Yeah, was, I'm a general brummie at heart. Like, I, I travel from B1 to B98. I've spent at least a month on every estate for at some point <laughs> in life with good peoples in it. So I'm not pigeonholed to one postcode or a block. I'm yeah, just yeah, a yeah. genuine brummie in it. Yeah, yeah. Are you a blues fan or Villa? Um, I don't really like football, you know. It causes causes divides within Ooh. any city. There's always the ups in it. I think everyone should just get along. Yeah. And... I was very, it sounds like Darren G. We had Darren G on and he, he, yeah. he put a rundown on. It is in Brum at the moment, I think. He's, he lives in he? Birmingham, yeah, yeah. yeah man. But the, the, the one thing we, we spoke about was... You know how football does divide. You've got the blue thing side, to argue the red about side. After you've had a pint in the pub, man, it's the first argument. Blues, West Brom, Wolves, Villa, and just, can we not just put a tune on? Like, <laughs> has anyone got yeah. bars instead? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's class, mate. That's class. But yeah, I, I love all football teams, and it uh, equally. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, ironically, you know what? Being as we've got on the subject of football, I did support Shakhtar Donetsk just because most Why? of them. Um, they got lots of young Brazilians and um, they used to sell them on and make money. So I just admired their business plan. <laughs> like, <laughs> and then um, obviously can't support them anymore because of what's going on in Europe, innit? Yeah, so it's, it's fucking sad, bro, innit? It is, it is sad. I thought you was going to say it was because of how the name, how it sounded. Nah, like. they, um, I think eight of their starting lineup for 2019 were young Brazilians, innit? I was like, good plan, man. Everyone knows Brazilians are sick at football. Yeah, yeah. So just bring them in. And, uh... More of a business plan than the actual goals, innit? That's what I admire them for. <laughs> oh, mate, you've got to see Cardiff's owner, mate. He sacked our goalkeeper because he didn't score enough goals. For real? <laughs> I swear to God, bro. I'll check and he out, changed bro. our colour kit because he said red was lucky. He was Malaysian, he was. Yeah. Bad guy. He's still there now. <laughs> We're doomed. <laughs> We're fucking doomed, bro. Trust me. Nah. Um, going back to the music. So, yeah, you know, you're from Newtown. Obviously, I think Birmingham was quite influenced in music anyway at them times, you know, growing up as a kid, didn't it? Yeah, there was people doing it way before me, like Basement on the Acid House since like 93. Yeah. So like when, even in the car and stuff, I've, managed to click the wrong radio station and get like Passion FM on and Daddy, what's this music? The proper, what was it? Happy Hardcore as well. Acid House, Happy Hardcore. Acid House, Happy Acid hardcore. To Happy Hardcore to um, the 180 BPM music. Yeah. So yeah, 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 I've always had some kind of access to underground music, even before me. And obviously uh, another generation of MCs above as well, with like your Vaders and your Midlands Mafia Legend. and your Graveyard Shift. and Midlands Mafia, wow. Yeah, remember GT and RD. I was in jail with RD in, in Stoke Eve. So down, free the guys. Free the guys. <laughs> um, so when did um when did Grime really come, you know, when did you become an MC? Like, uh, when when you would say, you know, yeah, I'm socks. Well, from about 2003, but I was at the level when I was quite confident and proud enough to think, yeah, I've got bars, which was my catchphrase. 
about like late 2004, like going into start of year 10 in secondary school and it, when you in, in the crossover of 14 to 15. And, 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 and what was you doing at the time to get your name out of there? Is your strategy same, stayed the same or did something happen in your life? Was well, it was it luck along your side? It, it wasn't the era of social media, so it was more traveling to places and meeting people. So um, my local studio at the time was Xenoform Studios, and um, I'd book a session, say one or two on Saturday, so midday, knowing that um, a lot of other people are going to be using that studio on a Saturday. So I'd pay my ten pound for the hour. I'd do my song, and because I was quite close with the owner, I'd say, "Do you mind if I just like?" have a roll up and go in the back and see but basically are the next boys gangsters or not all right cool they're not gangsters i'm going to go in the back room <laughs> and have a roll up and um i'd write lyrics to whatever song they were working on privately behind the patio doors and within the last 10 minutes if they seemed like cool people and um there was no one else left for the song i'd come in as the save they're like oh if no one else is jumping on the tune i've got this so if i'd done that with the two o'clock and three o'clock session then the five o'clock and six o'clock session then the seven o'clock I'd end up with six tunes in a day that I'm not paying for that are all going back to different places of the Midlands. And that's a Saturday. So th that was the way to get your name out there still. Then eventually I'd get in touch with the people who I've done the songs with, get invited to their areas, house parties, meet other people, find new studio links and create your own group, like your own, I wouldn't say a gang, but your own network of yeah. like-minded people just through text message, isn't it? Wow, that's... <clears throat> That's unbelievable. Never heard of, of, of that kind of strategy before. Like, do you know what I mean? But it, it wasn't a strategic way of thinking too much. It was just, bam, that's what I need to do. I'm, everyone else is doing songs today. I need to be on as many songs as I can. And don't get it twisted. Some man would tell me, I'll go away. You're not jumping on my song. We don't like your lyric. And I'd just say, okay, no disrespect. Hold it on the chest and wait for the next session to come in, innit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, would you say this is just across Midlands at the time then? Um, well, any artist, basically, yeah, because it was a Midlands-based studio. Xenophones in Birmingham, I'm assuming. Then, it was it? in central Birmingham, in the jewelry quarter at the time, yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. So you'd have, you'd have all walks of life coming over there then, all different artists. Yeah, of course, man. Like Afrobeat before anyone had ever heard of it. <laughs> like, I, got, I, got a, I got a lyric here for that Afrobeat. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Yo, fair play to you, boy. I admire your fucking, your push. Did, did, did you really go to Northampton? Yeah, yeah, come yeah. come back with a jib? Yeah, yeah. What, <laughs> what was the ends called, man? It began with an S. We got run out of Northampton as well. I'm not glorifying it. We shouldn't have. Um, no, but I, li I lived in Northampton, Shea, see, Kettering, yeah. Kettering Town, it's near Wellingborough, but no, Northampton's was... quite mad, like. Yeah, I had some good times up there, though, man. Some good birds, some good house parties and that. Yeah, good birds. <laughs> yeah, man. Socks so, loves a gal. It's about eight quid on the train in them days for us, isn't it? So. Yeah. Northampton's, you know, brought some good MCs now, you know, Izzy Gibbs and... Definitely, man. You know? Is it um, Champagne Bubbly as well? Uh, Dapper? Yes. The gar them man have been doing Garage for how long? Time. Keeping it alive, man. Yeah, yeah, man. Fucking hell. So, um, what was like your first, you know, you're your hustling and doing this. What was your first break, would you say? Was it, would it have been like a YouTube video that blew up or... Well, um... That's when I discovered you. When you say break, like, um, viral... Yeah, I, I, I probably should have worded that differently because it, there is no blowing, is it? There's like stages in it. What is blowing like? But when do you feel like you thought, okay, you, you know, my name's getting out, you know, I'm... I think the birth of YouTube, because then before it was all tape packs and sending things around on MSN or trying to physically sell CDs, which is nothing wrong with. You can make a good hustle selling CDs for a five or a piece. Yeah, Mike GLC style. <laughs> a couple of mills, mate, doing the same thing. Big up Mike, man. But um, yeah, the birth of YouTube, because I, I got in there early. We was on Google Video before YouTube started. And um, YouTube bought Google Video for 139 billion in 2006. So all my videos that were on Google Video automatically went on YouTube and started getting um, promo because there was, Google was investing in that platform at the time. So then all of a sudden I've got 100,000 views on a music video. So would you say that like, um, you know, your, your SBs, your grind blogs, the ones that we all seen, this was very, this is very way before. Way, yeah, this is way before. I'm talking like, like 2005 here. Most people have heard of me for the flushes and the grind blogs. That would be 2010, 2009 at the earliest. Yeah, no, 2010. Yeah, I filmed that Christmas Eve. But you'd say what across Brum, especially across Brum, you Blue was a household Tuff, name at the back of the buses with your um Sony Ericsson's. Yeah, I was out there first with the mini, with the mini speakers and that. Yeah, man, put it in the corner of the cup and it so it plays louder. Echo, echo thing. But yeah, from, from Bluetooth and that, I was one of the first in Birmingham that was, was on every 
different social demographic of fans, should I say. I was in every ends, not yeah. just the hood in it. And who did you look up to in Brum at that time? Because like you said, you had Midlands Mafia. Probably like Mayhem and Deadly yeah. and the uh, MCs from my block. Most of them don't spit anymore, like Mally Man and Chemo and that. But um, yeah, and obviously Trilla and London Man. And then, yeah. sorry, at the same time as YouTube, that's when... Um, Baseline? Ba Baseline. I thought you was about to say that's when Baseline came about. No, nah, that's when um, Channel U started. Cause I think yeah. Sky Digital done a free trial for about yeah. six months and everyone got onto Channel U, innit? Channel U was sick, And it? that's what brought like urban street culture into everyone's living room, yeah. like of the average house, so to speak. Remember, remember, was it XXU? Channel XXX, like it was Channel U. It was Channel like U first. 12 o'clock, you'd have like Nelly with bare strippers twerking. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that tune tip drill, man. I, I, I remember the video. It reminded me still, because um, Agro Santos had two versions of the video yeah, in it. Yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, remember Twist Man was sick as well. Remember Twist Man? Yeah, man, too many classics. They've done a documentary mm. the other day, so if anyone that doesn't home know invasion about Channel U, um, Home Invasion, go watch that, man. Big up Cat Park. Not not invasion alert. <laughs> invasion alert. <clears throat> yeah, man. Fucking hell. Those were the days, man. They, they, those, those are the the heyday, the, the the golden era, I would say, of of grime. Yeah, man. Well, if we took, I'd, I'd say from 2010 to 2013, that's when grime was really in the Midlands. In the Midlands, yeah. You're talking stay fresh and all that type of shit as well, well isn't it? Really? Yes, stay fresh, man. Big up, stay fresh. Like um, they were six months ahead of invasion with everything. They like kind of set pace and showed man what you need to do. What would you say that's down to their manager, manager, that, manager, and now? Is it desperate now? Not, not a hundred percent because that definitely helps. So obviously, you've got ten talented MCs in there as well. Yeah. SX a producer. You got Saf one in the crew. You've got Ray Dad. Ray so, he's my, he was my with favorite. With good management Ray as well, of course. That's why there was. That's why Stay Fresh always did better than us on paper, so to speak. And yeah, it, but you had heavy competition with them, didn't you? Really, I've seen a lot of like um, sixty-minute takeovers and uh, freestyles where yeah, but, it looked like a healthy, com com competitive. Like, but we didn't have management; it was just us like, sorting out who's going to drive today. Was it? Where is it? Well, like, you it hit all, man D two. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> DJ Freeze driving, we'll all jump in the car and that. But oh. I, I was the first person to realize that like you need budgets to do things. Like we, we're doing all these stuff at first. Like I probably lost twenty k touring before i've ever made anything worth making back and you know just to get to the places and eat every day right. and especially if you're doing say three shows on the weekend and then you're having one day off and one day i might be coming to wales the other day i might have to go to manchester to do a freestyle and that like it become expensive man yeah. and then if we had a manager before that he would have been able to orchestrate Streamline everything for us and, and yeah. make sure the whole house are sorted yeah, but, but you know you look back at that like and think do you know what uh, this is something i love doing anyway like oh no i don't regret anything i think it's maybe for some of the other members that were in invasion as well in it that maybe didn't get as many bookings and stuff it it would have helped if there was like one ringleader or something yeah yeah was jk in invasion yeah yeah he was was he i didn't yeah I, man from 2009 to 2016 i think yeah 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 and uh, like how many of those channels were were birmingham um based like Going back to like, you know, was, was Flush Raw Birmingham? Because it seemed like most of them were from yeah, Brum. Flush Raw still, that's Birmingham. Um, Grime Blog was Birmingham. Those were the first main two. Then Grime Daily done a spin off of Grime Daily North, if you remember. Yes. I think that's where the hot box was with Bugsy that I did. That was And sick, then, bro. um, yeah, P110 and JDZ, they started surfacing about early 2011. You had a manager from early on, though, didn't you? DJ Apostle. Apostle was, um, doing management in. It was the first person to shout man in like 2010 and show man some of the ropes and that, you know, you can be getting paid for this and certain things should be set in place before you leave out. And so, yeah, he was like my first mentor slash, I wouldn't yeah. say OG because he's not that way inclined. Like my first big brother figure in the industry. And, it. and, and, when, and when you did get like signed and you had a manager, did you see a clear difference in what you was doing? Is that when you started to get your deals, your sponsorships, that type of stuff? Well, everything that I've always done has been management progression. So the whole point of me working with someone is to get me to the next level as well. So if I have, say, for example, with Apostle, when Boy Better No shouted me, it was he obvious the that baton. they could have had more options for me at the time. So rather than try and hold on to me as an artist to make money as a friend, is go and leave Ray, that Ray path. I know that's what you want to do as an artist, like who wouldn't? So free ball. Oh, shout out to Apostle. Yeah, big up, man. And what was that like when you got something? Like, what was... <laughs> What are you thinking in your head? Like I've got like probably the 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 daddies of grime, 
shouting me out. It's not like I'm being lynch mob from Stay Fresh. I'm being lynch mob from BBK. You know what's kind of mad, yeah? You, you see, like, all right, I've been watching you on a podcast for, like, two weeks. Um, we spoke on the phone a bit. I feel like I know yeah. So you see when you've been watching, man, on DVDs for years and that, like, all right, the first day I met <laughs> JME, I, I feel like I've known him for 10 years anyway because I've always been studying your progression. I know that you like BMX. All these little things from interviews, like, I know you as a person before I've yeah, yeah, even yeah. met you. It's mad, so it's easier to just... So we're in, like, a star No, it wasn't like, thing. oh, my God. It's just like, oh, yeah, maybe I thought one day I will meet these people. I know a lot about them anyway, and I feel like I should be in this room anyway, and I've earned it. Yeah, you've earned your stripes, you, yeah. <clears throat> and that's 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 very important to go into in any anything in life, whether it's a job, whether it's a role, whatever. You need to know that you can fucking own this. and Know your own importance, or you wouldn't yeah. be there in the first place, and it yeah. kind of thing. I can imagine you getting on with JME more than anyone else out of all of BBK. To be honest, Jamie doesn't really drink or smoke, can it? So like, only oh, well, that was the barrier. Then. So only in studio environments. Like he gifted me this hat, actually, ironically. So little things like that, big brother vibes. But I'd always be out with Jamery and Skepa because they were the party. Right, man. Fancy, can it? Uh, the, the way I the way I looked at it was the BMX in the gaming. Like he seems like a a quirky kind of guy, like who you would hit it off with. Yeah, man. I think I was just getting on it too much them days, <laughs> it? as you would when you get signed. Yeah. In it. <laughs> Well, talking about getting on it, like, it, it's something that you can't ignore because it's in probably every single lyric you do or every single freestyle. There's always a talk about some female in there. Like, yeah, man. what's your problem? Have you, got a, have you got a sex addiction or something? What is it? Not even, but um, my brethren's granddad did say before he passed away, the only thing he regretted in life is not having enough notches under his belt, innit? So it's always, like, playing Good. the thing in my head in my early 20s, like... One day I might break a leg or not be able to give the same performance. Let's make the most of yeah, it while yeah, I'm yeah. young. And I knew, I knew, I, do you know what? Always drills in my head. And do you know what? I'm not lying. You know, like there's some, like some songs, there's some uh, lines from a movie or lyrics that'll just be in your head for the rest of your life. You know, like you could be doing something and a certain objective you do, a song you have in your head. I always say, oh, he sucks. What are you doing? I'm shutting them bags with powder in. I got a single man with a son. I need out with him. It's like, it makes me laugh, bro. See, I think that one done so well because it's the, um, what the media portrays as the Birmingham accent. Even though to us, no one don't sound like that on our block. It's, um, it's like Dudley and the Black yeah, Country. Yeah, Dudley. Big up Dudley and the Black Country. It's like my second home. I'm not saying it as an insult, but because the media puts that as the Brum accent, yeah, kind of hit the algorithms before there was algorithms. Yeah, yeah, it? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought he's banging, banging mothers and that. Yeah, Single man. man with a son. Running Fine, around with him. <laughs> Class. We had uh, Luke Bennett on, didn't we, last week? He's from Dudley. Do you know yeah. Luke Bennett? He's a TikTok sensation now. He is. He, oh, I have to check his stuff out, man. Big he's a up. funny kid he is. Like, he is. He's a, he's a youngster. Like, it's this generation, like, the, the reason he's famous is just mad. It's like, this is what this generation is now. And I think they've got many more opportunities than what we did. Do you agree? Yeah, 100%. Like, even if, Especially with just filming things, it doesn't really matter what you film. There'll be an audience for it somewhere, <laughs> and, that, and one day you can just accidentally get the right yeah, thing. Yeah. Even like Biggie, I mean, I don't know much about him. Just that he's fat, he takes his top off, and he has a laugh. Yeah, and that's pr about it. But fair play, man. If you can make a life out of being a fat legend, then class. No, 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 no. Invasion <laughs> alert. <laughs> yeah, I, I was on Netflix last night, and is this film? It's it's. I haven't watched it. It's a new one with Woody Harrelson and they're like on a cruise ship and it's like, it's, it's portraying what the life, the ugly side of the rich life. Yeah. And this guy's on there and on the clip is some Russian guy and he goes, so what do you do? And he goes, I sell shit. It's like, you literally write, there is something for everyone. This guy is a millionaire of selling doo-doo. Like manure and stuff industrially. I think it's human shit. That's what I'm saying. Like he can literally go to the toilet and, and shit dollar. Isn't that weird though? But the reason yeah, I've said it is yeah, not random. It's because you, know, you, you said it's it. I, I suppose, man. I, I remember, um, won't say which Premier League footballer, but one of them sold their toenails back in the day, innit? Uh, yeah, big P, man. He scored a penalty, famous penalty, hint, hint. But um, yeah, his toenail went for dough on eBay, man. Mate, there's been big penalties. <laughs> so how am I going to hint, hint you with that? Who the <laughs> fuck? What, 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 what team? What do you know about Wales' number one rated security provider, Boss Security? Boss Security Limited are a professional security service provider based in South Wales, but servicing clients on a national scale. With over 10 years of experience in the security industry, they are true experts in all aspects of security. 
from CCTV monitoring, man guards, mobile patrols and alarm response, they provide the most advanced technology on the market along with an expert team of staff delivering complete security solution to their clients throughout the UK. So why don't you stay secure, stay central and choose Boss Security? Um, it's paid for a few over the years, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> He's making the waters now, isn't he? Yeah, but like, like um, I don't know if you follow any YouTube stuff, but we interviewed, um, we've interviewed Decker Heggy and Danny Christie. They, these two guys who had a bare knuckle fight. I, I think that was brutal. That was it was man. brutal, weren't it? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. We and and the Joyce's who who were in there as well. We done. We didn't do them. Obviously, we interviewed them, but. Um, like that Decker, mate. He's trying to sell like his fucking bundies, his vest, his fucking wraps from the foot. Like the wraps or the gloves. I get like good boxing gloves or souvenirs, isn't he? We're trying to sell his sweaty bundies and that from the fucking fight. See, I'm missing the slang. What's a, what's a bundy? Box. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool, Briefs. Cool. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he haven't got a little Ted Bundy in his pocket. Yeah, man. Yeah, no, but it's like, yeah, it's people, if they can make money off it, they will, won't they? Do you know what I mean? Standard, man. What's some of the, there's got to be some weird requests for you. There's got to be some people who have asked you for some random stuff in your life. Um, well, well like clothes and that. Yeah, that's. I think that's one of the main ones, isn't it? Um, I don't know. What, like someone's messaged you and no, asked? I haven't. Not, not really. You know, just clothes. Like people have, and not, probably not even in a weird way as well. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Th- chicks would want to keep something that they like me in, and probably some of the lads would want to buy. Not lads, but males from the internet Flat would would want to buy like um, a jacket from a specific freestyle that's not out anymore to like frame and keep in their okay. memorabilia room, like things like that. In it. So where is that famous black and white hat? The hat man hat. It's on my wall, man. I, I keep that there. All the sweat stains and everything, man. Oh, I love it, bro. <laughs> I love one, shit. One like day that. I'll auction it for charity, and it. Would you ever do a freestyle in that again? Um, because I've seen a comment. If and it was a fresh version of that hat, no, 100%. Y- you could lose the mojo, bro. bro. It's all brown, <laughs> bro. I swear down, right? Yeah, I've seen. It was on a comment, and it was the top comment. You must have seen it because it's a top comment on one of your freestyles, and it's like. When Socks lost his hat, he lost his, his like, mojo. That's what he said, bro. <laughs> so, uh, like your superpowers, bro. Yeah, man, I have to put it back on, innit? Nah, no joking, bro. Um, okay, then. So, th- listen, I, 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 I'm trying to keep it as positive as possible, but even Harrison, my camera guy, the one thing he said was basically how you kind of first heard of him, really, weren't it? Um, and, and that is... In the words of J.K. Song, he mentions you and something that happened to you. Yeah. Can you go into anything about that? Um, Most of stuff, obviously, I don't want to make it like a, a crime podcast and that. No, but, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But being from inner city Birmingham a lot, and coming up as a rapper, um, a lot of disputes have happened and there's been a lot of disagreements, most of which are on Google anyway. But um, yeah, over the years, like there's been loads of attempts on my life. I've been stabbed a few times. Man have been shot at. It's... Not to say it's normal where we come from, but it's we we didn't sign up for the army, but it's become normal, and it like especially in my young. Obviously, I'm an adult now, but age like 19 to 25, when you're finding your way in the world, you're gonna have enemies, and yeah, I'm not trying to look like an underworld <coughs> figure on the podcast, but yeah, no, man's no, been through some stuff, man. Like Do you drillings th- before drillings was drillings. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> county lines before there was yeah, county man. lines. <laughs> it's like. Do you think, you know, like now we look like we all say it, yeah, and and people said it to us when we were younger, and we think shut up, you old fat. But I hear it commonly in media, and what people say is like this: these next, these youths now, they don't give a fuck. It's it's next level, yeah. We can agree that, but do you think it's just you know what it, it is? Ain't. As well. It's just it, our it's age. Just, no, it's Sorry. just because there's cameras, so all this shit was still going on, just as bad, if not worse, if yeah. not worse, because there was no camera phone. So really, there's less, but you see it more. No, but a little happy slap was okay. Like, yeah, well, like, no, I mean, we had there's happy always slap. been real stuff going on in the cities, but no one had a smartphone to put. Or real criminals would probably be really angry if someone started filming it and posting it. Your olders would give you a clip round yeah. the ear, and you'd be. Because you're basically snitching. So, um, yeah, I think it's up. There's been stabbings just as bad over the last 30 years, but 
now it's just on your your street blogs pages and on Instagram and on YouTube for you to see it, isn't it? Yeah. As yeah. From, sometimes it's from the ends, that's what I think anyway. I think it's in the media more. Yeah, yeah. Do you know why you just said that? You remind me because you sound exactly Scar City. He's Birmingham, isn't he? Yeah, he's South, South Birmingham, is isn't he? So similar accent. Do anyone know? Do you, do you know who he is? Like, do you know who the guy is? Because it seems like he upsets a lot of people as well. Yeah, if I, I'm not sure who he is, man. Is is not? It's not me, and <laughs> <laughs> I, I ain't got the time. But now I think um, you must be able to find out who owns the company through yeah. Google anyway. I so. swear, years ago when he first started, he used to show his face and then he stopped. I don't know. Now he's got had rap videos at the start because it was a he did didn't channel, he? Didn't he? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, bro. Uh, yeah, but now big him up anyway. Can't yeah, I? yeah. No, listen, it's good what he does. It is good, like to, to an extent. To an extent, yeah, man. And he had my mate on there, like I was pissing myself <laughs> for the Ancro chat thing. He had him on there. Uh. Oh. Um. Okay then, so before I go into some of the things as well I want to talk about in your career, um, what, what was your favourite freestyle out of all the ones that have been on YouTube? Um, I like my uh, JDZ Media Road Rage still. It's the one when I reference all the lyrics that people have had from Birmingham over the years and add my own twist to it. Okay. Probably not my favourite. Um, See, when, when we listen to, like, when I listen to Socks myself, I, I think I sound better on sets. I don't think I've ever been that good at making a specific song for the radio or something. But if you want to listen to a grime set for an hour with me and one man back to back, I think that's where I really excel in it. So, yeah, like, it's not really a freestyle, but the manga thing in Belgium, for example. That was sick. Or the pyro <laughs> radio thing that we've done with the Brummies the other week. You, but, well, so you think one of your most recent is, is probably when you your most lit, like? But, yeah, I get sick of... Sick of old lyrics as well. So after them, um, I think I said to you the other day, like I don't really listen to my grind blog or my flushes or anything. Like I've done them. I was there when it happened. Other people play it at house parties. I kind of know some of the words and that's it. Which probably mad to most people that like that. Like some of my friends know it word for word and they'll have to like prompt me. But, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'll have like an hour of new lyrics like now in it. But when you think, if you put all my songs in order, bro, I can literally rap for like two weeks, no cap. I've done it before as well. Uh, how um, how often do you write? What is your writing process? How do you write? Like when I used to write, I used to, I ended up, what I used to do is I used to get all my words, my rhyme words, and then I'd fit them into bars like. Yeah. Um, I, I can what? do that. But um, first thing of how often do I write? Um, Every time I take a, sorry, every time I go to the toilet, I write four bars. I'll probably urinate four times a day. So there's a 16. That's you've a got, that's no, cost ball. You've got nothing better to do when you're having a wee or doing what you're doing than to think of four bars. You might be reading the paper or whatever's going on. Let's pick something out what's going on today. And then by the time you've got a 16 every day, as long as it's written in your phone, you might never use them all. It might not be an album, but one time down the line, one grime set or something or a feature that you know, have you got bars? Yes. Scroll, 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 scroll. I'll be scrolling for centuries. Wow, that's interesting. And then that, that's just default backup. So then you've still got projects that you do going to the studio, working with rappers, writing for my own singles, yeah, my own that's albums. That's what you call them, default backup. Yeah, yeah. Just, be, just there if, if you need Yeah, yeah. It. Like a spare tyre. In the notes, like. Yeah, man. Like a spare tyre. <laughs> well, and, and, and how do you write? Do you, um, do you have a process in writing? I, or, I prefer to repeat, repeat, repeat and learn, but it doesn't work with long songs. So if it was just a 32 or a 16, I'd just repeat, repeat, repeat. And I like to think if you forget it, it weren't worth remembering. But if well, I'm, repeat it well, without writing it, just repeat just in your keep, head. Because you'll get the first four bars, for example, yeah. from the first toilet trip. Yeah. Then I'll go and do something else. I'll keep thinking over and over and over. I'll probably get to like 14 bars into it. Keep repeating that. Later on in the day, I'll think of oh, something else that rhymes with it through having a conversation with a different person. And then, yeah, keep remembering and remembering. Well, but then if I was right. to say, for example, if me and you was to do a song and you sent me the beat first, Respectfully, I'd write it down on paper and practice and rehearse it and bring it to the studio. With yeah, me. yeah, of course. But for of my course. projects, yeah, rehearse, rehearse. And if I forget, it won't worth remembering. Um, you know, when you practice, do you practice in your head or do you actually like Oh, no, my, na my neighbors it? hate me. I'll have the tune on like volume 28 so no one can actually hear me out loud in it. You know, like when you don't hear people to sing, are you singing in the shower? So you blast the tunes kind of thing. And then you'll spit it loud. Yeah, I'm going mad in my yeah, you've room got now, it, but the music's you... on like volume 30. But you innit? know what I learned? Like, like, when, back when I used to spit back ages ago, yeah, right? I could just write lyrics, yeah, in my head and then just spit them and they'd be fine. 
Weird, I just like my chest is fucked from smoking so much shit. Like I, I can't catch my breath now. So what I done when I got clean this time? I'm writing lyrics, and in my head, I'm like, bam, 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 and it's going sick. Mm. When I went to that mode set, I was running out of breath, bro. I couldn't even spit, and it's because you you have to really rehearse them physically. There's no point just spitting them in your head and thinking, or right, yeah, that goes right for your breath, um, you right for the breaks as well, isn't it? So right, sometimes you could think of another word that would sound better, but you ain't going to be able to do it live, like yeah. three shows every weekend. So you'll have to put an ad lib and break. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So <laughs> in so man. studio might be blessed because you could just go, yeah, pause me another foot. But on set tonight, yeah, you're good just going to sound Wembley, like <laughs> <laughs> exactly, bro. It, it was the one. It was the rapper who fucked up live. Is it? I don't want to make my team man's from downfall, but Yeah, I know you're on about man, <laughs> but. But that's that's what happens. Obviously, it's not his fault because he's just come up so quick. Let's say I don't know what his past and previous, but to my knowledge, correct me if I'm wrong. Sorry, Rams. He had a hit very early in his career. Maybe within the first eighteen months, he was top ten. So then, to where have you performed? Because say, for example, I started in the basement in Wales with like under eighteens. I've seen things go wrong. The speakers have broke. Um, not things have gone to plan. The DJ hasn't turned up. If you haven't had a few hiccups along the way and then one earpiece breaks, a bit like how we had a technical with this, it will go to pop for certain, man. And they're going to wrap how their head tells them to. But oh, yeah. the, the studio is saying you have to wrap off time to an earpiece for the rear speakers of it. If you had not it's been long. in the game for 10 years, that's just going to mess you up, bro, isn't it? So yeah, it's not and, and that could have took him off his stride massively, that. Like, I think you'd have, haven't it? You know what? He did bounce back with some good songs as well, still. Stop I've, being nice, bro. Uh, no, he, he tried, man. He's a good dude. <laughs> do, do you know what I love about socks? Do you know one thing I will say, bro? You are so positive, bro. And you don't... It seems to me like you're one of those guys who just wants to collaborate, not compete. Or well, compete, like, but you know. Yeah. You're just all love, bro. Like, there's no... Well, there's enough for everyone to eat, bro. There's enough land for everyone to live. So, it's, what's the problem? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're right, bro. You're right. Oh, sorry to go back. I got to mention it, it again. JK, you seem like you were very tight at one stage. I, I know without even talking to you that you are happy as laddie of where he is in his life, what he does. But what, 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 why do you think you never did? Like, it seems to me like JK is more of a household name now in, in that scene than you are. Mm. And like, like, for example, just little things like, you know, JK's blue tick. He's got a man. Like, I know you've got manager and stuff, but it just seems like he went one way and, and we didn't hear f from you for a long time. Can you go into a bit of that? Well, yeah, I wasn't putting many tunes out because it was um after the mobiles. I think we was originally both nominated for the same one, but um, unfortunately he was incarcerated at the time in it. So, um, yeah, when he come out of jail, obviously lost depths as well. It yeah, was rest a, in peace a, to depths. R.I.P. Depp, and it was a... Uh, big thing to for him more than anyone else that was his right hand man in it so off the back of coming out of jail and losing your best friend so to speak the story that you've got to tell now is mad so that all the albums it, it was it was his time and his place fire, and yeah. everything happens for a reason whereas i was doing party music in mallorca and doing other stuff i was in london with boy better know so he found his lane he stuck to it he had good management and he's done well and he's done everything that he should have done maybe he was more hungry for himself as an alpha male than I was. I've always been a team player, whereas he's just a lion, a striker. If, if it's football, he's playing up front. He wants to be the top goal scorer. He, Goalie, he's always had that in his heart yeah. from a 16 year old, what I've always seen. So it was always destined to go a lot further than most of the other people in the crew that don't have the same heart in them and the same nothing to lose mentality sometimes, bro. So um, yeah, man, with good management and the hunger, whilst I weren't doing music, there's only going to go one way, isn't it? Oh, I love that answer. But that is the point of being around man in the first place and putting man in a position to do well. Not that man did it on purpose or had it for intentions. When we're all rolling together and there's 10 men in a crew, if one man does well, it benefits all of us. And it? it's not like that's a bad thing, which a lot of people seem to think like, oh, my man's doing well. You're not doing as well as him. That, that's a bit crazy to me. Like, that's my brother. That's the whole point of everything is for man to do well and met P. And if I didn't want man to do well, then you're just a pagan. And if you think about your friends like that, then you're not a good friend to them, bloods. So I don't understand people's mentality, man. So I think my man's doing a lot of his boxing now and into other avenues as well, isn't it? I think um, last time he left studio, he's going to Saudi with Bowser. Got them not do the knives down, gloves up, yeah. keeping them kind of things rolling as well. So yeah, man, we got Jay. No, I love, man. That's beautiful. 
And it is. It, it needs to be more of that bucking, don't it? Do you know what I mean? Looking yeah. after each other. And, and like, besides the internet, it's, it's my little brother, blood. Like, <clears throat> yeah, man. Fucking he ain't little. <laughs> wow, you know what I mean? Yeah, metaphorically. <laughs> um, okay, Lord of the Mics. Inside. What was that like, you know, growing up listening to Lord of the Mics and then being asked to go on Lord of the Mics? At first, it was amazing, you know, because um, obviously I, I went to the market. I'd bought number one and two. I'd watched all of them in Conniver's house, big him up. And um, yeah, I was really excited, blood. But then other MCs kept falling through. So I put all my passion into writing for Shifty from Manchester. That would have been a sick clash. Blood, I, you, know, you know, I was a big Shifty fan. Put yeah. That way, you get me. I remember he come to Birmingham and done a freestyle by the bull ring. Like before I was a big MC with Burns' Grime, big them up. So I've seen them man doing the rounds before we were doing the rounds. Well, so Burns' Grime, yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the Instagram page. Yeah, it was, it's been a company in Birmingham for like 20 years as well. Are they so. the two twins, are they? Or? Yeah, yeah, Earl and Reese, man. Big well, they've up. been doing their thing for that. Berms is Grime one. has been a company for about 20 years, and it before Instagram and everything. First it was clothing, then it was events. And they do music. It's always done, been something, man. A lot of my freestyles have been Smash in there. their studios as well, so big up the Smash twins still working, man. So it was meant to be shifty at first. Really. That would have been a sick Yeah, clash. and as I said, I, I've... Got all these one extra freestyles on my phone and that, so that would have made me really try hard and like care about it more than anything, can it? So I've been writing loads of lyrics for him, and then whatever happened with Shifty happened. I think he had an accident or something. Car crash. He's, yeah, just don't wanna, if he doesn't want to speak. Yeah. Sorry, bro. Oh, cool, you make man. me feel bad. No, nah, but it's other people's business. No, we're talking yeah, no. On, Shout it's, out to it's Shifty. My bro. bad. Um, you know, there was somebody else before Murky. There was, really somebody, there was somebody <laughs> else before they asked me to clash Murky A. So I remember Cosy being fourth, and um. Whatever right it was, I went, I went to the internet cafe at the bottom of the road. I put a quid in. I Googled this person's name and he didn't have a solo song on there. He was always like part of a song with 15 other rappers on. Cozzy. Nah, the nah, the, the second person in it. And then, so I was a bit disheartened about that. So then I, and bearing in mind, I'm just a rapper from Rum. I don't want to be phoning Jammer and saying, oh, my man's shit. I don't want to clash it. I still appreciate the opportunity and I want to do it, innit? And then, um, yeah, Cozzy was the fourth person and I was, it was kind of put to me like, oh, yeah, you, you need to stop being picky now. You either clash my man or you don't. And it, like, we were giving you opportunities. Stop. And it's probably me having an ego as well, probably just because I had more YouTube views. I probably should have just been thankful and clashed the first person that they gave me anyway. And it, you regret it then, do you? No, I definitely don't regret it because that person is like absolute dirt now. Like, he's not doing music or anything. And they're not. Well, about, no, the second person. That oh, no. Clash, Sorry, bro. That, <laughs> no, what I'm saying is, do, do you regret the Cozzy thing at all? Nah, because it was a big stepping stone in my career as well. Because you have to remember, off the back of every Lord of the Mics, you do a tour. Yeah. So I probably had like eight clashes with him. Off camera, the geezer's all right. Like, we don't have any issues, and it like, we're still traveling in the same minibuses. We're still going show to show. We're spending. What, and you're talking blessed. You're... Yeah, we're blessed, man. So it's, it's not like we're on smoke. On like, camera, he is acting. On camera, really like he but is... that's your job, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's like Phil Mitchell. I bet if you seen him in the pub, he ain't going to be kicking <laughs> off with people. He's going to be he's gonna be chilling, isn't it? I don't know, man. I've seen that one with, um, oh, what's his name? He's from fucking Birmingham. Um, Oh, he's done a ch he's he managed by Desperate as well. Um Oh, what's his name, bro? He's from Birmingham. He was like Lord of the Mics five or six. And he clashed um the guy from from Nottingham, I think it is. Not Reese West. Um basically he pulls out a fucking a photo. You're on about Tanner versus Tanner, Ten Dixon. Ten Dixon, bro. Yeah, but uh, that, that was fair enough because Tanner got his hat slapped off and um, within the contracts, it should be no physicality in it. Did it really happen then? Did Tanner really get, or was that, was that a trolley thing? I'd, um, As far as I'm concerned, I wasn't physically there, but it'd be hard to forge that picture. It'd be more photoshopped than it's So worth, yeah, for, for detail, like basically he's bought, he's whipped out, he's whipped out a photo. But saying that, he could, even if he didn't whip his hat off, he still had that photo in his pocket. He was going to draw for it, bro. Yeah, but that's, that just shows what um certain women are like to, that hate yeah, on yeah, their yeah, boyfriends because yeah, yeah, yeah. she must have strategically went to do that knowing that he's clashing do him that. down the that's line. So, she, so basically she fed her boyfriend to the line. He's Jose Loyal, man. So yeah, but yeah. Big, big disrespect sucks, to the gal, sucks, not Ken Dixon, isn't it? <laughs> so this guy's clashing another guy, yeah. And his girl has give this guy a blowjob, knowing that he's gonna clash him, take a photo and and, and put it out. On a Yo, show, Ten man. Dixon's lyrics on that are sick though. Some of them lyrics as well, bro. Yeah, man. Big, big up Ten Dixon, man. I'm sorry the girl scarred you like that. That's bad. That is. Yeah, it is. It is. Not nice, man. 
She weren't on Ten Dixie's Dixon anyway. It was on <laughs> Tan's Dixon. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Um, yeah, so so that happened then. Lord of the mics. How do you think? Because there was two, weren't there? Weren't it like a rematch on the one? I know the one you was wearing like the blue and the purple. Yeah, so we, we did a rematch about a week later, and then there was um, seven or eight live clashes over a two week tour after, and it. And if you talk, and so you'd say the most important ones are the DVD the, ones. The ones are the, what, what are filmed, and it, and then um, well, most important it depends on where your heads at at the time. Yeah, I yeah. like doing the live ones, yeah, because yeah, yeah, you yeah. got crowd reaction then, and if yeah, so did, um, did you slew him on the live ones? Um, I'd say it was five two to me, you know, like um. He murked me at Batchwood Manor, but it was to do with mics as well. I think it was a bit of jiggery pokery going on behind Where's, the scenes. Is Andy at his end, is it? Um, what's it called? Like, like Bedford, like Bedford, Watford, so okay. not far from. Let's go go I call that neutral. I wouldn't say that's an advantage to him, but the, my mic was a bit whack in it. So it was, um, yeah, it was a bit of a struggle. So he won the Batchwood Manor one, but 5 2 on, on aggregate to man in it. And then you clashed a girl, didn't you? Yeah, first ever male versus female rap battle in history. That's the reason I've done it still. Yeah. Yeah you, yeah, you wouldn't have done it. Lady anymore. Likes. Now, well, obviously, Jammer was my boy as well. And um, I think a lot of other male rappers didn't want to clash a woman at that time. But, you know, equal rights, equal opportunity. And that if you want smoke, you can get some smoke, innit? <laughs> <laughs> would, you, uh, would you go back on that again? Or Yeah, why not? It's, just, it's good. It's entertaining. It's what the people want to see. It's, it's like the sport element of music as well, innit? Yeah. People always want to see two things go together, innit? Is there any... <laughs> Any anyone out there you've always wanted to clash or you want to clash now? No, I've always tried to avoid it. I've never gone out and instigated a clash. It's just when people try and disrespect man, I'd, I'm willing to send back. But I'm not going to start poking lions with sticks to try and get a reaction in it. But if anyone... Is there anyone you've had like this kind of maybe, you know, low-key competition or someone you felt... I, I don't think there is, you know, because anyone that the public say I have low-key competition with, I have a mutual respect with between them and I'd rather work on something with them, if that makes sense. So anyone that I think would have a good chance against me without being arrogant, I'd rather work with than against. So it's... Forever. <clears throat> uh, in Birmingham, would you say that, you know, you're still up there as number one MC? Grime MC, yeah, it's always going to be a matter of opinion, so I can't say it myself. But um, if it comes to grime and that, no one's not going to put me in their top five of all time from the city, and it yeah. where, where I'm still getting played on everyone's phone on the buses like I was 15 years ago, definitely not. But within the right places, yeah, man, within our generation. And as I said, when your hometown doesn't really support you as much as outsiders because they're always used to seeing you. I mean, people ain't going to pay and see a tenor to see me in Birmingham. When just, they might just see me in the KFC or just <laughs> in town, yeah, yeah, just yeah, walking not, around. Yeah. Like, it's that starstruck stuff again, isn't it? Being used it's to seeing it's someone. It's normal for brummies to see socks. But man. I think another bit is, there is crabs in a bucket as well. That mentality sometimes. Some people don't like to, It is, it's a real thing. People do get mm. jealous, bro. I hear you, man. That's why you just have to um, live within your means, and it? Don't try and stand out too much. Yeah. Um, you went to uh, what, what? What happened then with this Mobo and D and B awards? You said something happened, really? Yeah. Because because I asked you the question off camera. I said like, what is it that you know? Why 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 weren't you so active over the last couple of years? Like, where did you go? And then you mentioned these two awards. So so what, what's what's all that about? Well, um, yeah, I think. When I first started, started getting nominated for awards, number one, I don't want to discredit myself, but I don't think I deserved them. And um, yeah, just, just seeing how I was treated at some of them, it's like I was used as a promotional tool, but when I've got there, like I'm very old school. Like I expect someone to let me in and shake my hands, like um, show me to my seat. Like I had to buy my own tickets and stuff. And um, yeah, I just didn't feel respected. And, it, and I know... It's hard to speak out about these things because the Mobo is a big brand and it is what most people would say, shooting yourself in the foot. But I do music because I love it. And out of the realness of my heart, I felt like something was wrong that day and I was being a bit mistreated. Like the, the red carpet's there. Man are telling me I can't walk down the red carpet, but my face is in the brochure. And there's thousands of people all over England watching this today, on the t but that would never ever be watching ITV at that time because I'm involved in it and in person. Not a chicken burger, not a pat on the back, not a. What reason. do you think that's down to? Um, ju just the industry as a whole and people trying to sell tickets and 
gain views on their platform. And I know that sounds stupid because the mobile has been going on for many, many years before I was. It's been what, a 20 year old company or whatnot. But yeah, my year when I was nominated, which is the only one I can speak off of in urban street culture, not unless you're in the industry, no one really cared about it. And I think I was used like as a bit of a token in it. Okay. And from that, it kind of. Well, yeah, well me, of me personally, or? I kind See? of thought I'd, if this is what happened, if this is the next step to music, I'd rather take a step back. Okay. That's probably a good way of putting it. And it even ha- little things. Another thing I'll add on is having to have security. Like that's the weirdest thing for me. Like if I ever get, which I did at one point, but which people recommended I had security. It's, I don't want to live my life with security. What is this? Some six, nine shit, especially when I'm a good youth that's not talking badness anyway. Of Eskimo dance. Um, my group wouldn't let me go to the toilet unless I had two security guards taking with me. I don't, I don't want two men coming for a piss every time I have to. It's a bit too much. And I've seen the other side of the coins. I, I don't want to go that far. I'd rather live between my means 50 to 100K a year at the, if I'm lucky enough kind of thing. And just don't want to be a millionaire that quick. Don't want to be in some of these social circles. A lot of them are emotionally fragile. This is their everything, their everything. If they fail this, it's a lot of different social demographics and different people in it. But that, that's just me, and it? It's probably because I'm from the streets and it's just a different well, it's not world. Well, is it? It's, no, it isn't. Like, um, I think the same mobile was nominated for Skepta um, won Best Video. He paid £80 for it. <laughs> My ticket costs more than that. It just says exactly, <laughs> isn't it? It's not, it's not grime, is it? This, this many and... But yeah, I am bantering a bit. And um, yeah, that was one of the things, uh, just be, being nominated for awards that I didn't truly deserve and just not wanting to fit in with that social demographic. And I wanted to go back to the streets for a bit, especially when Man in the Hood is saying you sold out and you, you haven't really sold out. <laughs> well, that's that, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the next step in it when you, as soon as you see that success, it's straight away. You've gone commercial, you're selling out. Mm. And it doesn't last long as well. There's so many artists that people would say have done better than me, but they've had a career. They might have had a number one, but their whole residual income has been within three years and now they're gone again. If man's been living on a certain means within my platform, every time I go up, my platform comes up with me. So I've never got far to fall, but some people go all the way up, all the way up. And when they hit the floor, they're splattered and they can't get back up again. So would you say strategically? If you, you, if you go too up. far, you can get cancelled. Just live within your means. Know who you are. If you love making music, you've got Spotify. You can sell what you can sell. You can be your own distribution. Go and do your shows. And um, just don't get involved too much in the industry unless that's the life that you want. And like you like television and want to be on it. And that's the world that you've grew up aspiring to be in. Isn't it? Do, you, um, do you think there's a lot of dark stuff you know, beyond it as well? I didn't get close enough to care, you know. I just got internet connection like anyone else. I see stuff, <laughs> but um, no, I don't think anyone I was around was. Um, architecture, you, you know, what, what are some? Yes. Of... <laughs> you can hear me. Like, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, you're not just you're not just a, a grime MC, are you? You you like there's other things you're interested in. Yeah, man, definitely. I was talking to you on the phone the other day about some of my studios as well and um, my pressure plated spinning doors that I had. Um, <laughs> I'll send you an insert to the editing team to put on. And I'll make sure, yeah. And yeah, man, I've just, I've just always loved computer games anyway and creating stuff, but not like Call of Duty because you don't gain anything. But even Minecraft, I was proper obsessed over that for about 18 months and, it, and um, built my block, built everything, started um, getting into the city centre with it and stuff. And um one day I was like, yo, this is actually like a, a craft, not just Minecraft. And it like, if man learn where the, the electricity goes and building plans and certain stuff, then I'm quite good at it, especially on Sims 4. And like, this is something that I could so, take seriously. So what are you saying with Call of Duty is just like, we were saying it with Calvin Ailey, it's just like serotonin levels. You you kill someone in a team death match, but you ain't going to be the show for it. Is that what you mean? At the end, yeah, your gamer score will go up and you might be 10th prestige, but when you turn that game back on tomorrow, you're still at nuke time with your... <laughs> Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, big up to everyone because I got a lot of online gaming friends. Yeah, Each to their own. But back I, at I'd time. always find with my Minecraft world, it was like actually doing a drawing, just a digital drawing. It's still yeah, there that you yeah, can come back yeah. and add two years down the line. And nah, I hear you, bro. But yeah, same as the Sims. Like I'm planning on doing a renovation at the moment, so I've just built it on the Sims first, rather than doing all the wallpapers. Just so it and to actually, so what are you saying? First of all, if you wanted to build something, you do it on Sims first. Get it how I want it, then... um, Then do it in real life. 
but then obviously you'd have to get your architectural plans, go and see where the pipes would go and the electricity or whatnot. And then once you can get that drawn up for a change, then you can go ahead and do it, innit? But there's no point in just trying to build a house before you've seen it. You might as well build it and walk around it on a computer first, see where the city goes, what colour you want the wallpaper. And... <laughs> there's, there's but yeah, guy, man. There's this guy called William Still. Have you heard of him? Who? He's, a, he's a football manager in France for a league, league one team. But he just smashed out football manager as a kid, 2001. To, he's one of the youngest managers and they, they've gone on like a 16 unbeaten Win oh, what, he played football manager the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and now then, he's a real manager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sick. And one of the youngest, well, 29, that, that's unseen. Well, he learned the ropes from young, innit? Well, well, we said gaming ain't bad. I, 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 do you know what? I remember I was like football manager 2004. And like this, one of my old managers mate, mates was like, if you buy Baddy Hales, <laughs> yeah, Baddy Hales, he was an old footballer. Mm. If you buy Baddy Hales, you'll win everything. <laughs> it's like, and, it, and it was like a glitch. Hmm. In the game, like, Barry Hales would, like, take you to the FA Cup final. You got Barry Hales, man. <laughs> Barry Hales. <laughs> fucking legend, bro. And the same with the trading games, then, is it? This, you get some income on this, and you said, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's my new little hustle, man. Obviously, I've been collecting Yu-Gi-Oh! my whole life and that. And um, through watching YouTubers like the TGF and Logan Pauls and that, started to see how much Charizards we're going for. And it's I'm mad, like, bro. Hold on. I've, let me have a little look into certain cards that I've got. Um, out of my thousand cards I had, most of them were a bag of rubbish and scratch, but one was worth 670 quid, isn't it? Was it? Well, how many other people know that, don't know that they've, what their cards are worth kind of Start thing? And, um, so I started looking through eBay for people that haven't realised which ones are limited edition and first edition um, purchasing mystery box. And yeah, I've just been flipping off Yu-Gi-Oh this year still. L little side hustle, isn't it? Wow. Um, and with the music, you're back now then. Is this what you're active, saying? Active, active, um, taste that music. Obviously, we've got Gypsy General in the group. We've got Shan Howlett. We've got Monroe, Old Tight J-Man affiliated. Um, we've got Nimrod dropped me down today. You get me, he's in the background somewhere. <laughs> but yeah, we've he's been active spot. this year, man. Trust me. <clears throat> yeah, I've seen that Gypsy General. Where's he from? Um, He travels. Oh, I wasn't joking, bro. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I've seen some of his stuff. He looks quite sick, man. It's, it's mad, isn't it? has been that wave of gypsy rappers, haven't it, like the last... Does it, yeah, we, I've heard of... you got Silky and... Um, Silky. I'm not sure if Jordan's a traveller as well from he, Manchester. He probably might don't be. Don't, not sure. French the kid. Not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've seen him in Marbella still. He was yeah. in that video, innit? Big him up. Yeah, big up. There's, there's another one as well, um, Charlie Chopper. I think he's like South London. Yeah. But yeah, man, it's a good thing, bro, because... It's not that negative either. It's like house. It's bouncy, and it? yeah. it's like bad boy chiller crew, but with a bit more crud to it. Yeah, yeah. What um, are you still going over to Spain and stuff? Then, or as often as I can, still you lived there, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. We was based out there for like six months, man. It wasn't intentional, but yeah, the vitamin D levels from the sun, the different foods, and that man, the women. It's like yeah, I'm, I could settle down here for a bit, man. You enjoyed it over there. Yeah, 100%. Uh, and the music steam was still there at the time, innit? So, um, ironically, I went there with 60 pence. I, I was a bit sad at the time. I thought, sod it. Got my flight money. Um, I'd been there the week before, so I thought, sod it. I'll go back. Had a few possible job leaks, but, like, nothing set in stone. Like, people that said you might be able to perform here and there. I said, oh, take the chance, man. Um, next morning, without breaking the law, I woke up with 700 euros in my pocket, innit? So, <laughs> it was a good decision. Yeah, man. a good decision, then. <laughs> And do you think um, the, the the grime will come back back around, same as fashion? Most music's on a fifth, well, on a twelve to fifteen year loop. People that are watching think of any drama and look into that. So everything loops back around, man. And your and your year for that then? <laughs> well, it, it, even some of the things like the freestyle that we might add later, I'd call it grill. So things just progress and it's, merge. It's, so it's it. grime. It, it's grime. grime. It's, it's but it just doesn't have the. Um, uh, the R.I.P. Pop Smoke 808s, the wing, 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 wing. Yeah. The, there's that one 808 pack that's been rinsed like internationally, but as long as it doesn't have that in it I'll, and a, a bit of melodics, you'll it, fuck with we it. Can, we can grill it, man. We can grill it. We can cook something. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, to be honest, that's what I, that's what pisses me off. To be honest, that that, that sound. Mm. You know, the hi hats are you can well, live with that. Your body feels it. We're all seventy percent water, so if you're going to play a D sharp in the lowest octave, it's going to go. In, vibrations yeah sub subliminally you're not going to be happy no exactly well you know if you play a fucking heavy metal tune like i probably want to kill someone but if i play i know bob marley and the wailers i probably want to 
you know, smoke a spliff in the sun. If I ever retire, I want to drop the brown noise at a festival. <laughs> the brown noise? What's that? The brown noise. I'm not going to say which note it is, but it's a noise that apparently makes you um, bowels Fear, relax. Fear if you, um, but yeah, I'm a retired. you bundies today. Yeah, man. Oh, the bundies. <laughs> don't want to um, have a bun in your All right. Yeah, well, I want to talk about this because I think it's quite mm. relevant then if we're talking about sound waves and stuff. What do you think of these? They think that the, some of these, because you're an artist, you might say, no, that ain't true, but there's a lot of artists out there that are playing dark shit like and they think they are mass rituals you know you've got playboy carty travis lil uzi Vert. what do you think of that do you know anything about that what's the one that you know what it is i don't even like shining lights on america too much when we're doing podcasts <laughs> over here you know but um, that lil uzi nas vert you call thing is um that's oh, one lil of them, nas X, you're on about, the turkey right? turkey one <laughs> the, the, yeah the turkey devilly turkey man it, I don't know. I just don't think it's good that kids watch it because um, back back in our generation, um, your parents controlled the television and there was only a few channels on. Yeah. Now kids get smartphones when they're eight. And TikTok doesn't really filter anything. Sometimes their parents will register everything under their email addresses, which is a person that's fifty six, for 50, example. Yeah, over eight. So when you give that to your ten year old daughter, it's just coming up with horror movie adverts or whatever other horrific things you can imagine would pop up for people that uh, adults are meant it's to see any of 16 mate. plus it is it is totally fucked up but yeah what what, what what they say like these artists i won't say they're american but like the you know the bases and that are very dark and they like some of these new beats and i like they are fucking dark and they would they i think it was a carty concert a couple of weeks back and they the, the, the girl went on snapchat and was like i've had to leave like this is demonic what i'm listening to is fucking demonic what about the uh, Sam Smith performance at the oh, VMAs that's fucking, or whatever? That's, that's it looked weird. like one of them roast beef joints from Tesco, man. <laughs> you know, they've got the <laughs> string around it. <laughs> I saw that meme, bro. Yeah, ah, true. Man. I mean, even me, I don't want to see that stuff as an adult. So for that to be coming up on my timeline consistently, not by choice, it's not good because that's happening to youths as well, man. Yeah, well, what, what is your what is your, your take on this? Um, this woke push of of trans and you know like drag bedtime stories we've spoken about what, what is your take on it live and let live don't force your beliefs on other people because i believe that your beliefs are believable Ooh. but don't force it on other people as long as you're not harming anyone you and you're living in your yeah. own little world and if that's what you want to do if you want to be penguins together yeah. go and be penguins but just don't come out of the zoo in it and i think the problem is they're portraying like we're people people who speak out on it now they think we're against it we're not we're not against you know what you identify as or anything like that it's the pushing it on little kids yeah, sorry it's that's once you're an weird. adult do what you want but don't be teaching yeah. people things like that and i think when i went to school sex education was um year nine and it so that yeah. was like when i was it's 14. in primary school so now bro because there was um the three drag queens that were going around um um I think there was a loin slip. I don't know if this story has been taken off the internet, but there was three of them going into schools and um, a private journalist followed them around and the same show that they was doing in schools, they was charging money as an erotica show on the weekend, you know, as their yeah. side hustle. And he filmed both of the shows and the one that he was doing in the primary school was like borderline the same thing that he's charging people on the weekend to do as an 18 plus thing. So don't want to say their names and it's get myself cancelled. adult entertainment at the end of the now. day. Why the fuck are you chilling with kids? Why do you want to? Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it, 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 it's, yeah, it's mad. It is mad. But it's like the same. Each like, to their own, uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Each, look, but like, look, I've got mates who have converted to Islam who have gone really religious with Christianity. And I say, I'm happy for you, but don't try and force it on me because I don't want to hear that stuff. And it's the same with anything, like, you know, if you say, "Oh yeah, my my cousin's gay," yeah, you can be gay. That's fine. Don't be don't be pushing your gay stuff on me. But good, you know, it's the same in it. Just don't push it. Whatever in makes places. you happy, as long as you don't hurt anyone. And that that's my quote. I believe your beliefs are believable. So as if you believe them and they make you happy, then it's okay. But it doesn't mean that everyone else is going to agree. Not me, but the rest of the world yeah. is not going to agree. And as long as your beliefs make you happy. Yeah. What what what's your take on on where we are in as as a human race at the moment? Um, well, we're advanced from Neanderthals, but um, after, after COVID, um, I don't know. I think some of the teenagers are a bit stuck with what to do next in it. I think it was for some people aged like 14 to 16 to not really go to school properly, have any structure in life, and then just to be let out back into the world without any qualifications. And 
probably no even desire or drive to go out and do stuff. Like everyone just wants to sit in the house. And that generation, I'm not j- trying to generalize, but most of the kids I meet now, age 14 to 16, that either don't want to go out on the roads because it's there's a lot of stuff going on or they have no motivation to go to university because they think there might be another thing in six months that means, oh, there's no point in going. They're not going to make a five-year commitment at this generation anyway. So I think as well, the pressure of this generation now, when you look at it, yeah, there's people who are becoming millionaires at the age of 14 from gaming or TikTok. So the pressures of... Wanting to make money. You know, back when we were younger, yeah. we very rare one of our boys is a millionaire. Lucky if one of my dad's friends is a millionaire. Do you know what I mean? You don't meet millionaires like that. But now kids are, are famous and they're making a lot of money at a young age. So think of the pressures that is for other people who go to college, be a plumber. I ain't being a fucking plumber. Are you fucking <laughs> mad? No way. <laughs> I, what, you, what, you want me to be an electrician? Well, for how much? Something that was really a good, stable job, which is... Will now be their backup plan. <laughs> Fucking, <laughs> it's it's bonkers, mate. It's bonkers. So I I'm worried for this next generation. You know, I, I'm I'm curious to see what kind of music they bring out. At, you know, 10, 15 years. What's going to be the next thing? <laughs> <laughs> I predict side trance, co trance, yeah, covid, <laughs> covid, uh, sound waves. Yeah, man, crazy. But um, yeah, listen, we could talk on forever socks in here, right? Um, I want to kind of. I want to know, really, what has you been your biggest learn? What's been your biggest lesson since been doing music? Like, what's your, been your biggest lesson you've learned? Um, see, I f- biggest. I don't like to order things, but I'll, I'll think of a few and let the conversation flow. So, like, <laughs> the third thing: always back up your data. Make sure that when you go to the studio, you don't just take the version from that day. You make sure your acapellas are separate. You've got the mix down of the beat. You've got your ad libs on a different place because one day you will want them. Someone 20 years down the line, someone might want to do a remix and you're going to go, oh, I ain't got that. It's on my mate's old laptop. We used to record in his garage. (laughs) Yeah, but now Atlantic Records, yeah, but it's in his garage, you know, he's got Windows 95. and So always back up your stuff and keep it up to date, even if you don't think it's going to get anywhere in it. Um, number two, make sure you network with the right people and not the wrong people. There's no clear way to, there's no one's going to spell it out to you whether they are or not the correct people, but don't fall into the wrong networks. And firstly, make sure that you're self-dependent, self-disdained. And if everyone else around you cannot help, you can still do everything on your own and you're still willing to tour. You've got your songs, you don't need a, a band or anything you still have to be able to do everything one man up if shit hits the fan in it backup data you've made me want to ask this question now so someone's come in for you asking you for an old song of it well everything just gets lost in it over the years hard drives corrupt and that look um i've had to record albums twice for example and they've been delayed by six months because of computers someone's kicked a bottle of wine on it or was there's well, no, but Atlantic Records haven't come for you for an old song. No, that was just um, <laughs> a different company, but same thing. Yeah, there, yeah. See, and you ain't got it. Fuck. It, so. Yeah, <laughs> that's mad, isn't it? What are you? Uh, what you got planned? We got planned in the future. What's going on? Um. Well, we're out doing UK gigs like what four times a month every weekend. We're out. Um. Me and Nimrod are going to put a sax tour on. We was planning to do it in May, but we look like we're going to delay it till summer. Um, I reckon summer's perfect. Summer's best, man. But um, if we was to do it in May, we'd miss all the people going on holidays to party because you still need the Brits in the UK before we tour, innit? N- another musical thing for A&Rs and that and and up and coming artists to watch. Yeah, say so, that again, what? Um, every, after May, everyone will be on holiday, all the ravers, innit? So you don't want to do a tour in the UK in June because everyone's in Napa or Ibiza or Dubai or Ghana or whatever the hit place is. You need to summer. get that Indian summer, don't you? Yeah, man. Late vibe. And then that's why um, December's like the best time of the year for artists, isn't it? Like everyone's off work. You've got the Christmas period. It's cold. People, no one's on holiday and that. So December's like the best okay. year that we have, in it? That's interesting, isn't it? I never knew that. <clears throat> yeah, man. And and do you see yourself, you know, pushing this now? 
because you've got your own studio now like you said before you used to have to rent and travel you've got your own thing is there no excuses now are we going to hear more no, socks work or we're, we're just lucky how the industry's changed because we've got online distributors so we can just put it on apple music spotify it's not as much hard work as it used to be driving to the record shop to print them off and getting all your discs burnt and you can upload it for what is it 21 pound a year and you receive 100 percent of your royalties. so there's no excuse for any artists and um I preach this to everyone as well, up and comers that don't know what to do or how to sell your music. Get a ditto, get a distro kid and just sell it. Even if 20 of your friends and family buy it, you haven't took a loss on what it cost you to make yeah. it anyway. And um, maybe that would show a lot of people whether their career is, is gonna do well or not. There's a lot of people that invest thousands and thousands into music videos and they don't get any views. And maybe test the waters first innit, and save yourself the, the heartache and effort. Yeah, 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 very true. Um, I think when I come into this interview, I thought I was going to get, you know, what, what's next, Sox? You know, are you, you know, trying to prove that you're trying to get to a, get somewhere in your life like, like, you know. No, I'm content, man. Yeah, that's what I've clocked. Like, you're happy with where you are. You're happy with the music you make. You're happy with the fan base you got. And as I said, solid residual income, as long as we've got bookings and shows, festivals, like that's the stuff that I, why I love music anyway and why I'll never quit in it. So I'd be a bit concerned if shows stopped coming in and my streams went down, but and they're going up and the shows are going up through work rate. So I've got no reason to be that hungry to go and be a chart artist and fit in with the current batch of people that are at the top. Yeah. We can't feel real, man. We're good. Real gang. <clears throat> <laughs> Hey, well, listen, I um, I think you're going to do a lot of freestyle for us on you anyway. Um, sweet, sweet. A legend, daddy. Yeah, I can't wait for this. I'm gassed. Um, Should we do a pause and... Um... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I want to do is, um, before we before we go cut to the cut to the freestyle, what we do with everyone, yeah, is down that camera, if you can give a positive message to the people, um, whatever you like, just leave them with something, bro. Um, no matter how hard things might be, just maybe change your scenario or your surroundings a little bit. If if you're struggling and you don't really know what to do next, just go and sit and think in a different place that you wasn't thinking in. Maybe go for a walk. Maybe take that left that you've never took before in it and just see how you, see how you think differently in it. If, if something feels too bad and you can't cope, just change your scenario or your surroundings for a little bit and watch how different you feel. That was lovely, bro. Respect, Honestly. Man. Yeah, man. Um, Listen, guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. We're going to see it out with a, a little freestyle off Socks now, but go and check him out on his social media. It is... Socks Online, and also Socks is Active on everything. Socks is Active is my fan account, so um, I'll be more likely to interact with people and any general questions and stuff like that. Socks Online is my business account for labels. Also, you can get through to Nimrod, my manager. Everything's in my bio. Socks is Active for fans, for business. Socks Online. Inside. I hope you enjoyed this one. Let's enjoy this freestyle and stay central. Inside the place. My South Sucks, Central Club Podcast. Stay central. Shout out to Bradley, the Colin. Trust me, Harrison on Deco. Rue Gang. Yo. This year Birmingham set in pace, everything's set in place Plan B of the second phase, I ain't rapping about selling haze or 10 inch blades Are you effing wave? Commands media trained, double message grace It's a new generation SMH, everyone's online like Tekken 8 I used to spend 110 on trainers, nowadays man wanna spend 110 on steak For a better taste now never mate, what is the point if you're still a featherweight You're just a bum that's waiting to detonate I'm not a knob that's stating to penetrate, I need a single mum that's 28 I met Hannah, she told me to add her, but in the UK there's way too many snakes Told them a jade, let's not get married, I don't want babbies it's on Wedding cake, 3.5, don't cry, go medicate. You're not taking half of my peas when we separate. Man's being very straight, situations get sticky like sellotape. I don't want no brought down, won't just a brought down HMO, I can decorate. Are you single? Do you find me attractive? Do you wanna kiss if you don't wanna kiss me? Come chill in the friend zone with me, smoke some weed and sip some whiskey. It's just a question, I have no fear of rejection, man, I got paintings with me. Come get along with all of us, tour the bus, take a look at the upstairs windscreen. Sucks you the best crime MC in Bromway, you're joining the crew from Talford. But my own goals ain't nothing like FC Schalkers. My new Quest ain't nothing like Zaldas. If man wanna do road and sell drugs, you need to learn how to drive like Chanel does. Oh, it's Shan, my little sis, can't diss anyone around us. There's a man at the desk keep asking me.
asking me questions, I'm not suicidal, I feel like millions. One phone call, no lawyer, I spoke to my hoyo in Mali and Argentinian. If I put my hand on my nose, like, oh, it means you're a pig in Egyptian. Just swore right, you were Chinese, Samoan, and Indian, but you think I need a prescription. Gemma the Scout Shock, how I the first can rap Portuguese, but I've never been Lisbon. Talking slang, trying to avoid the system and use words most men don't understand in England. Some of my real G's gone from Sweden, and my ex was Indonesian. French and German was part of the curriculum. Different. Skilly Bang said he's got crackers out teeth. That means there's couple hollow tits for the opposites. I don't want politics. I'm not slabbered, I'm a loss of each, but your girlfriend just gobbled on a lot of dick. Her surname's anonymous, but her first name's hippopotamus. My south sucks on big like the prodigus from the Galapagos. Old school like Stanley Gus Papadopoulos. Oi, Colin, this is ridiculous. You won't ever beat me, that's preposterous. I went to school with the Kosovans. All of my Liverpool duns get glass from the Bosnians. Middle middle might check my Slovakians and the Albanians when I'm in Tottenham. Chilling with Yannick is teaching me Latvian. One day I'll be the champion. Borat said there's a lot of potassium in Kazakhstan, but there's more in the Vatican, but not all my figure are Italian. I'm trying to make more money than Solomon. It's not long like an Ottoman. What goes round comes round like a hurricane. I don't want a hurricane, I just want bubble gum. Who's got a cue? Somebody call Ronnie O'Sullivan. I love buddhism more than crudism, but I still come from Brom like Wooligan. Never ever been scared of the boogeyman. Man done more than 25 shows in Sucky 10. Boogie Dave, can we do a rape? Bangers in the rave, I'm cooking them. I linked Alice and slept in a palace, but I was in Turkey, not near Buckingham. In my ends, there's quad everywhere. Open a studio, didn't charge no one. Try out kids like Pods in the Bear. Man Try rap man underprepared, go why? Now there's blood on the stairs. Now we gotta have a combo like Marie Gang and Munch and Gang. Over there, just in case PC plod over air now. Outside, that's where you are. They took the piss now, man's happy par. Them man thought they were bad, no, 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 ha, 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 man's had a laugh. I don't know where to look over track, what a bar. You know where I'm from, I put everyone on, so that dude, that's a game, bar. I press restart. Do that again, don't think it's bars, oi. Inside the place, Central Club Podcast here, yeah. make sure you stay central. Locked in, locked on, like, comment, and subscribe. Rue Gang, Invasion Alert, taste that music. Bye! The Central Club.